Hey guys, welcome back to our stock forecasting series. So in this video, we're going to be using the Garch model in time series to forecast not the price of a stock, but the volatility or how jumpy a stock is over time. The reason you might want to do this, you might only want to, for example, buy a stock if it's not very volatile, if it's not very risky at that period in time. So if you're not familiar with the Garch model at all, I would say first watch my both theoretical and coding videos on the Garch process, which I'll link in the description. So let's press forward. The only new libraries you might really need are the Arch model library, which will allow us to run Garch processes. And I'm using this Pandas data reader library to get stock price data. You can also use the Y Finance library I've used in previous videos. Either one will work. And this code will be available online. So if you don't have these, you can go ahead and just pip install those libraries and you'll be good to go. So to get started here, let's grab the stock price of Disney. We're going to go ahead and predict the Disney volatility over time first. So the ticker is DIS. We're going to grab that data here. I won't go through that code because you can go ahead and run this. But you'll be able to see this series. So what you're looking at here is the percent change of Disney stock between one day and the next from the time period starting in 2015 January and ending at the current date, which is June 2020. You see that this is a good candidate for the Garch process because there are clearly, especially recently, periods of much higher volatility than some other periods we might be looking at here. So this is a good candidate for Garch. But of course the question is, which order Garch process should we use? Let's go ahead and turn to our old friend the PACF, the partial autocorrelation function, to get a good hint. So we see that in the PACF, it's pretty strong up until lag 3, and then it kind of shuts off. Of course, you can see it's growing over time again, but just to keep the model simple for now, we'll start with lag 3 for both the P and Q of Garch. So we're going to start with the Garch 3.3 model and see what happens. So just like in the coding Garch video, we build the model up with the parameters we set, 3 and 3. We fit the model with the data. So here's the data I'm putting in. We go ahead and see the summary of the model down here. So we see that actually our choice of model may not have been the best, and we can see that by looking at the coefficients. So of course we picked a GARGE 3.3, so you're seeing 3 alpha coefficients and 3 beta coefficients. Not to go too much into the theory again, but remember the alphas correspond to the lagged version of the time series, and the betas correspond to the lagged version of the volatility. We see that for the betas, none of them are significant at any level. For example, here this p-value is 1, this one's 1, and this one is 0.17, so obviously these are not very strong in this model, so we are pretty safe to just drop them. So what we're going to do is try again, we're going to try a Garch 3.0, because clearly these three lags here were not important at all. But of course we know a Garch 3.0 is just an Arch 3. So we've taken the model down in complexity, which is good, from a Garch 3.3 to a Arch 3. So we go ahead and fit the model again, and we see now all the coefficients are significant. So we see that alpha 1, alpha 2, and alpha 3 are all significant at pretty much around the 5% level. And of course the omega is also significant here. So we're good to keep all of these parameters. But how strong is this Garch model that we built? How good is it at predicting the volatility of the Disney stock over time? We're going to go ahead and use the rolling forecast origin, which I described in the main Garch coding video and some other videos in the past, but just as a recap, what we're doing the rolling forecast origin is for 365 days, we are building a Garch model for each of those forecasting periods and then predicting the next day out. Then we take that day into account, build a whole new Garch process, and then predict the next day after that. Then take that day into account and so on and so on. So we build this, we build 365 such models and we end up with a prediction, again, a prediction of volatility that looks like this. So I want to be very clear about what you're seeing on this chart here. This blue line is still the returns of Disney stock. So this blue line you're seeing here is the same exact blue line as you are seeing up here, just at a shorter time frame. So you see that this was 2015 to 2020. Here we're looking at a shorter time frame just between 2019 and 2020. So the blue line is returns. The orange line is the prediction of the Garch process, but that prediction is a volatility. So we're not looking for the orange line to match the exact signature of the blue line because they are two separate things. Again, the orange line is predicted volatility. The blue line is the true returns. What we are hoping is that the orange line gets higher, so the predicted volatility gets higher, exactly when the actual returns get more jumpy, when they literally get more volatile. And it turns out that's exactly what we're seeing. We're seeing that here when the blue line, the returns are not very jumpy, 
the orange line is also pretty stable. So the story that's being told here is that, oh, this is not a very volatile time for the Disney stock. But we see here around when the coronavirus crisis hits, of course, the stock price of Disney got very volatile. And the Garch process was, of course, able to pick up on that, also growing and now shrinking as the stock returns of Disney are becoming less volatile. Now, just to give you one more example here, we're going to look at the S&P 500, which is a collection of 500 diverse companies from across the economy, sometimes called an index fund or a measure of the overall health of the economy. So again, using the same sort of code, here is the S&P 500 for even longer time period between 2000 and 2020, so 20 years. So we see several periods of high volatility. Here was the Great Recession, and of course, another big one here around when the coronavirus crisis hit, and other big ones as well, to smaller degrees. So again, a good candidate for the Garch process. Looking at the PACF, we see that two lags are pretty significant, after which it sort of shuts off. So let's start with a Garch 2.2. So you see me building a Garch 2.2 model here. Fit it, and take a look at the parameters, and we see that this was actually a good choice. Because we see that although this 0.31 is not significant, the beta 2 is fairly significant. So you could make a judgment call there, but we're going to go ahead and keep it. Therefore, we're going to keep this Garch 2.2 process. So now we go ahead and do the rolling forecast origin, just like we did on Disney stock returns. And we see that this is also a pretty strong model, just, just visually. Just looking at how we see periods of very volatile Stock return behavior match up to high spikes in this predicted volatility, this orange curve here. Now, of course, how do we actually use the model? So if we look at the volatility prediction for the next seven days, we see that it starts off pretty high, then it dips pretty low on this day, goes back up, dips again. So we can use this volatility prediction. And again, you want to use it in the shorter time frames because as we predict longer and longer time frames, we just become less certain about exactly what it's telling us. So we can use this volatility prediction to help make judgments about whether we should buy or sell a stock based on if it's going to be very volatile in a certain time period or expect it to be not as volatile. So hopefully you learned a little bit about Garch stock modeling. And if you have any questions, let me know. This notebook will be available online and I'll see you next time.